steal me in. Is Blackjack your game? It's not so much my game, as it seemed my kind of place. I'll stay. You sure you don't want to try for more? Well, when I see something I like, I know how to hang on to it. Interesting philosophy. What can you tell me about that mug club? I'm just a girl looking for a good time. Hit me. Are you sure that's what you want? Oh, I'm quite sure. Positive. Hit me. That's the ancient art of kata. We've been practicing that for the last month because to learn about cultures is to appreciate cultures. We have a huge show for you tonight. Producing with me in video studio, as always, is Jared, who is not gay. Follow him on Twitter at NotGayJared. Me, at S. Crowder, with your comments, conclusions, not the photoshops. I fulfill my legal obligations. Draw your conclusions. We're good? I'm still not good at kata. We're, none of us are good at kata. <laughs> you know who's great at kata? Who? People who can't fight. Oh! At G. Morgan Jr. Yes. I wish people could see all your dance moves in the intro. Not just a little here and there. No, no. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's strategic. You need to pepper it in there. Uh, huge show. <laughs> Big. Big show. We Massive. have the return of, uh, he's been traveling, Europe, all that, New York, Dean Cain. Yes! yes. Yeah. Jerry was Super unnecessarily enthusiastic. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, Blair White. Many people have been yeah. asking for that for a while. I, uh, I hope it's pleasant. I actually yeah. am uh, kind of a fan of, of Blair and some of the content that, uh, that Blair puts out. So uh, we've had differences in the past, but that's what Louder with Crowder is for. That sure. and horrible jokes. Also, yes. <laughs> um, we'll be talking about Vox Sanctuary Cities. That's pretty big right now. It's, yeah. it's obviously in the news, and Vox released a video. I had a lot, I've had a lot of requests this week saying, hey, can you get into the Sanctuary City thing? I don't exactly understand what this is. So it's we everywhere. will talk about that. But um, leading this off, the reviews for Bill Nye's series we talked about earlier this week <laughs> are in... <laughs> Bill Nye's series on Netflix, uh, panned by critics. It's been plagued by low ratings, and it seems like it's going to be canceled. Uh, Bill Nye's allegedly been returning or planning on returning to his previous day job of not science. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor guy. Poor guy. <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> what can you rough say? Go. Another What's big thing. Uh, Joy Behar. Did you see this? Joy Behar is in hot water uh, because she compared illegal immigrants to slaves and Jews in the Holocaust. <laughs> okay. It's one of those things when you're thinking about, well, how do you write comedy? She already went to slavery and Jews in the and Holocaust. Jews. Usually if someone yeah. compares it to slavery, you're like, oh, and someone compared this to Jews in the Holocaust because it's, it, we're taking it more extreme. She just snatched up all the comedy. <laughs> she did. She let them so know where to go. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh. it. Which actually, I mean, it, it, in comparison, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, it, her yeah. frustrated rant pales recently on her tepid morning coffee being compared to Hurricane Katrina. <laughs> oh. She seems like she didn't, uh, <laughs> she knows, she knows now. She knows now. To walk a mile in their <laughs> soggy shoes, Whoopi. <laughs> Rob Schneider, this is big in the news right now wow. because he tweeted it out. Uh, surprised a lot of people. Rob Schneider came out and spoke out against uh, Berkeley and uh, the yeah. suppression of free speech. You know, he used to be a, a liberal, Rob Schneider. Yeah. And I he's been know. coming out more and more. You know, it's, it doesn't surprise me hanging out with the Sandler guys. They it's tend true. to be kind of more libertarian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad to see some celebrities speaking out with this. It really is funny. It's uh, obviously, it's not funny, but the irony in Antifa being nothing but fascists <laughs> exactly. is not lost yeah. on people like Rob Schneider, apparently. Though some did question his motivations because Berkeley, and I can kind of understand, um, they put an official moratorium on the upcoming release, Deuce Bigelow 3 Fascist Gigolo. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it seems like they had 
<laughs> a little bit more of how a did, reason. How'd they get the bird on the foot? That's impressive. I, I don't know. That's impressive. We spared no expense There's here at Lotter with Crowder. <laughs> so here's something else that happened Train at Berkeley. Every, it just went viral. It was lighting the Twitter ablaze. So before we get to Sanctuary Cities, this is the last topic we think we needed to hit on because, gosh, it was flooding my Twitter timeline, and we wrote about it at uh, LotterWithCrowder.com. Uh, at Berkeley... This person was crumpling up a Donald Trump uh, flag, I guess you would say, sort of like a promotional banner, and someone called them out for it, and this person who is transgender does what transgenders at Berkeley do. Watch the clip. Rip it, yeah. Yeah, there's a big man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not a man. I'm not a man. Fuck you. (laughs) I'm a fucking woman. Respect that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wait a minute. I don't even know what's happening. <laughs> Here's the honest to God truth, and we'll have maybe we'll have Blair White be a tiebreaker later. Um, <laughs> I read the story at Campus Reform first, and it just said this transgender individual. Yeah. Which for those who are wondering, it answers nothing. Um, <laughs> What, what do you think? One you think may it, say it poses more questions. It, may, it <laughs> creates more questions. Because what, what do you think? You think this is a, a male to female transgender? Or do you think it's a female to it, male? Is it confirmed transgender? Transgender? They just wrote transgenders when the story first came out. Transgender. It's a mistaken yeah. identity thing, though. I can see why. What do you I think, know. Gerald? I mean, look. I, at, look, look I, at, I, do you think male to female transgender? Or do you think it's female to male oh transgender man, at that point? It's, I, I'm going to go with male to female. You think it's male to female? Yeah. Who yeah. still dresses and looks like a male? On accident. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how much thought went. And, and you had a different theory altogether. I think looking at this this individual, it looks like I would guess lesbian. Actually, lesbian. I you think just, you just think it's a big old standard all. lesbian. I think, I think we're so quick to pull the tranny trigger. <laughs> We don't consider trannies are quick to pull the trigger. Unfortunately, consi- it's true. We don't consider it a good old fashioned like. <laughs> I, I, I won't lie, that did Hello. cross my mind as well. Uh, it, honestly, it, it is hard to identify, Jeez. which is, you know, this is what Bill and I should be using, which is why we go to um, science. It is important that you know this is not a mainstream tranny. This is actually the Campusus Transtuticus, <laughs> which is, as it's known scientifically, this is actually found exclusively on campuses, not to be confused with its parent species, just the average mainstream tranny. Because on campus, when you add gender fluidity, uh, of course, the idea of pansexual, there are multiple combinations. That's true. So in analyzing the specimen... Uh, using science, we can actually get to the bottom of this. That's good. Most, well, we, can, we can make an inference. Let's do it. Science. So, okay, in the male to female column, that this might be a male to female transgender. Uh, right away, height. Yeah. Obviously, clear cut, very tall individual. That adds a twenty percent likelihood that this person is a male. Uh, cofactor with that is the circumference, the diameter. As a matter of fact, it's an exponential gain, not necessarily linear. Uh-huh. <laughs> but we're just going, for the sake of, of argument here, a 60% increased chance of it being a male. Sure. Um, I don't know if you see this there, Gerald, the cleft chin. Yeah, yeah. That makes a 14% uh, more likely chance of it being a male. So so that would seem, if you look at the percentages, which I didn't before this, um, I didn't add it up at all. <laughs> so please don't fact check our math. It would seem pretty heavy this is likely yeah. a male. Yeah. Well, okay, because way. this person says I'm a woman. But why would a male to female transgender look so much like a man? So there is an argument to be made that if this, this is a person who is a female to male transgender, but who is fluid and identifies as a female. So in the female to male column, there are some things to look for when uh, analyzing the subspecies. Uh, first off, the complete and total lack of muscle tone. <laughs> as you see, that would be a 40% sure. chance yeah. likely to be it's reasonable. F- female. Um, here the obvious subcutaneous mammary tissue, 32%. Uh-huh. <laughs> more likely to be a female. If you look at the vocal tones and the body language, it displays great emotional instability. 82% more likelihood that it's a female right there. Um, And then, of course, this individual claims to be a female, but on campus, that only increases the likelihood of them being an actual female by 1%. We should note that with these studies, there is a plus minus uh, percentage point of inaccuracy. Yeah. So statistically, (laughs) it gets us into murky territory. Um, It seems like, so male to female, female to male, any of you change your opinions? No, I'm sticking with it. I'm because roll with it. there's some detective work, something. Upon further inspection, close up, not gay, Jared. When you look at the shirt, the shirt says leftover crack purgatory. 
Ooh. And right there, uh, upon further examination, a cat pun t-shirt gives it 100% likely that this is just your run-of-the-mill homosexual thing. <laughs> Scientifically known as the Fagus Flamboyacus 100%. Ooh. Solve that mystery. Gosh, that was tough. Thank you, science. We yeah. can't understand. There's, there's no rule book this for this. Is? You see what you're doing to us? I'm a woman. Oh, gosh. What? And what's so funny is that when the leftist sites were trying no to say idea. this person was provoking the transgender. If you watch the video, the person goes, oh, what a big man you are, crumpling yeah. up a flag. I'm a woman. And the guy doesn't respond with a smart-ass comment. He just goes, uh, yeah. <laughs> can you blame me for not knowing that? I, mean, I don't on. think he set out to insult the transgender no, that day. No, no. I think he just was... Uh, upset at someone behaving like a child, crumpling up. Uh, a, a, by the way, he has a Nazi patch. <laughs> I know by the Nazi patch <laughs> outside of actual Nazi Germany. I don't know. I don't know how this person found the you know time to do that outside of fighting the Incredibles. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> because when everyone's special, no one is. All right. Nice. Vox Sanctuary Cities. Uh, this is something a lot of people wanted me to get into Sanctuary Cities, describe exactly what it was. And I was going to do it this week, but Vox beat me to it this week. Um, and here's the thing. If someone disagrees with me, we'll have Blair White who disagrees with me on some issues. If someone disagrees with, with some points of view on this show, that that's fine. My, I don't have an issue with MSNBC. You don't really hear us taking a lot of shots at MSNBC, much more so CNN, because Chris Cuomo uh, thinks of himself as, my God, an actual journalist. <laughs> so... When Vox goes out and tries to act as though they're simply uh, describing what a sanctuary city is and what's occurring in practice, and uh -huh. you draw your own conclusions when it's clearly uh, uh, biased reporting, that's where uh, my antenna go up. So let's let Vox describe for you what a sanctuary city is. First, what are sanctuary cities? They're cities and counties in the U.S. that limit their cooperation with immigration enforcement, which falls under federal jurisdiction. These policies are different in different places. In Chicago, it means city employees aren't supposed to share residents' immigration status with other people. In Washington, D.C., it means police officers are barred from asking residents about their immigration status. Um, that's actually, that's fair enough, I would say. That's pretty accurate. Sure. Uh, for people who... What do you seem makes suspicious? Makes me hate Washington, <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what like, like, it just there. makes me say. I don't want okay, to visit there. They're explaining the situation. Okay, but they I'm are good. explaining it. Uh, I As actually think that's a pretty fair initial explanation. It basically okay. comes down to um, cities and cities that don't have to enforce the federal immigration law because federally, coming here illegally is a crime. Uh, crime. Uh, Keyword yeah, there: yeah. illegally, it's a crime, and the punishment for that crime is really just being deported. That's pretty pretty lenient punishment if you think about yeah. it. Punishment is eh, you end up back in your room. Yeah. It it's home. a go to your room timeout. <laughs> sure, <laughs> only forever. And your room is a crap hole if you come from Mexico. So um, that's what's happening. It is local law enforcement in certain cities not being required or refusing to carry out uh, national immigration orders. So it it. it well, a couple of things there. Well, there is, I hate to use the word nuance. There, there's a little bit more to it to that, and, and, and we'll get into the rebuttal more with Vox here. But it, that is what it is. It really comes down to the feds versus local. It's like every old cop movie you've ever seen. Oh, criminy, it's the feds. All right, kid, scram. This is my beat now. Hey, what's the big idea? I've been working this case for four years. Four years? There's one thing you better have. What's that? A good retirement package. Ah, oh, get out of here. Ah, oh, oh, baby. Get out of here. Ah, yeah, you know nothing. Here. Life. Why can't you two just get along? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, next clip. Next clip from Vox. But often, it comes down to this. How does a local police officer handle an unauthorized immigrant that he's already arrested for some other reason? <laughs> Was that a question? <laughs> <laughs> Deport him. De deport the person who's here illegally. It's pretty simple. <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, okay, <laughs> is this multiple choice with one? <laughs> one, one a, we just you didn't deport. use an H one. Was it an H two pencil? Uh, it didn't go pencil. through the scantron. B. If you need other options, please retire from law enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> please refer to A. What? Uh, give me your badge and your gun. Okay, if that's not enough, if that doesn't seem uh, like the argument is substantiated enough that hey, you should enforce the law and deport an illegal immigrant. Let me throw some numbers at you. An illegal immigrant, we've talked about this on the show before, costs the taxpayers about $5,000 annually. The cost of incarcerating a felon uh, or one of these illegal immigrants can be 32000 if they're being arrested for committing a serious crime. Comparably, flying them home, courtesy of ICE Air, is between seven hundred dollars and $2,000. Also, they're a criminal. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, you've captured someone here illegally. Why? Through an auxiliary crime which they were committing. You've captured them committing another crime. That's how you've pulled them over or you've arrested them. And then you happen to find out that they're also here illegally. Two double secret crimes. Merry Christmas, Officer Krupke. It's been <laughs> gift wrapped for you. Next clip. Word gets out around the immigrant community. Anytime you interact with local police, it could mean deportation. Eventually, immigrants will be afraid to call the police, even when they're the victims of crime or the witnesses to it. And then immigrants become easy targets. <laughs> what? <laughs> deport illegal and other, other uh, so if you deport illegal immigrants, other criminals will be afraid to interact with the police? Yes. I, 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 <laughs> here's the thing too, this is, this is the crux of their argument too. Let me preface this. They get into very quickly the constitutionality. Now. Uh, constitutionally, local law enforcement are not required to enforce uh, federal law, basically law enforcement that would fall under federal jurisdiction, okay? However, they're not really being asked to enforce uh, federal, something that would fall under federal jurisdiction. What they're being asked to do is provide a 48 hour, 48 hour waiting period uh, for ICE to come in. Basically like, okay, hold on, I'll get my keys, I'm coming to pick them up. They're just asking local law enforcement to keep them there long enough so that ICE can come in and do their job and deport these people illegally. But let's go with the crux of their argument here, which again goes back to the science of feelings, right? As Bill mm -hmm. Nye talked about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the premise, do you really think that illegal immigrants right now are calling their local man in blue, backing the blue fervently for peace disturbances or domestic disputes? Los Angeles Police Department. Hey man, yeah, like my neighbors are playing their music really loud. Okay, can I have their address and your name, sir? Shit. What? Uh, no habla English. <laughs> they are crafty. <laughs> they need to bring in the feds. Okay, since Vox is, hopefully you've realized what's happened. They described sanctuary cities accurately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We are far off on speculation here at this point. <laughs> yes. A and we fully admit what we provide opinion on this show. And fact check us. That's fine. Sometimes we're wrong. Okay, but Vox is trying to present this as a nonpartisan view of sanctuary cities. So since Vox is speculating here that um, in what is supposed to be a non-biased video, l l let's think this through. What is it? Play it through, as Gavin says. Do you really think the net result of enforcing deportation laws will be that tax-paying, police-compliant citizens in a Latino paradise will now become an enclave to crime? I don't think the evidence will bear that out. As a matter of fact, I think the evidence will show a very contrarian conclusion. In late January 2017, shortly after he got into office, President Donald Trump signed an executive order that opens the door to withholding federal funds from sanctuary cities or counties. The wording of that order is vague and it's already being challenged in federal court. But if Trump's plan does move forward, it could put local law enforcement officers across the country in a lose-lose situation. For them, deciding whether to honor a detainer request is often about choosing between financial security on one hand and public safety on the other. What? Uh... <laughs> First off, what? And yes! <laughs> Yes, exactly. Okay, if a policeman, sometimes called a lawman, right, yeah, yeah. refuses to enforce the, I've seen the Steven Seagal show, if they refuse to enforce the law that ensures the safety and order of its citizenry, the higher ups or even the taxpayers who fund those who are supposed to carry out the law sometimes cut the purse strings for the lawman. Was anyone else not aware of this uh, sort of unwritten, well, actually written, but yeah, for most people, this was in the contract, just, verbal every time. contract? I can't, can't get it. If you don't enforce the law, we remove law from your title. It'd be like, <laughs> so, and you're just a man or a woman anymore. Be like, I, sir, I'm going to give you twenty dollars for a pepperoni pizza. Okay, that's a spicy meatball because that's what they say. And then they take your money, but they don't give you a pizza. Yeah. And the owner of that place says, "Well, you know what? We're going to fire you. Why? Because you didn't make pizzas." Is that hate speech? You racist. Well, the meatball was, <laughs> but the analogy remains. <laughs> Next clip. <laughs> If the federal government issues a detainer request and the local police department refuses to accept it, the state government can step in by taking away one of the state funding streams from the local police. That's what happened in Texas in 2017. The governor of the great state of Texas, Greg Abbott, has declared he will sign a law banning sanctuary cities. He's already issued an order that cuts funding to those sanctuary cities. This is dangerous and I will not allow it as governor of Texas. 
Okay, here Pride we go. Baby. Um, yeah. Vox's argument, as we see, rests entirely on feelings. Again, they're claiming public safety here. Right? This is the argument. They're saying, yeah. well, cops have to choose between deporting illegal immigrants or public safety. Or cooperation. <laughs> yeah, or public safety. Well, hold on a second. What does that mean? Does that mean, um, this, are we talking safety of legal immigrants who obey the laws on a day-to-day -day basis? Are we compromising their safety by deporting illegal immigrants? Enforcing nope. deportation makes them less safe? I'd like to see a reference on this from Vox. Any reference. Or are we talking about public safety specifically of communities consisting of illegal aliens because they might live in fear of actual laws being enforced? It's like they're arguing for drug dealers. Hey, somebody <laughs> stole my drugs. Can you, uh... <laughs> What? You know what's going to happen. You're going to get trumped. They're going to say that you just called all no, Mexicans drug no, dealers. No, no, ah, comparing it. It's just comparing it's criminals. Gosh, okay. Jeez. So instead of that hypothetical that Vox presupposes, let's look at the evidence here. Um, guess what? Illegal immigrants here tend to commit significant amounts of crime. Not all immigrants, not all immigrants are, are, are committing crime, but crime is high in the illegal immigrant community. It turns out when you skirt the law and flagrantly disregard the law to get here, and you're not even on the books for the law to find you, you may not have a ton of respect for the law. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what brought, this is the single issue that brought Donald Trump to power. Um, because people were, were, people who are here legally, and I come from a family, of it, not a family, my mom is French Canadian. She didn't even speak the language, she learned the language, she's a tax paying citizen. I am the biggest advocate of doing it right by the books that sure. you can find. But people are tired of the illegal immigration. And this is what this is what this is what brought Donald Trump to power. Everyone thought that he was racist, and they said Donald Trump's racist for wanting to enforce the laws. Let's paint him, let's tar and feather him, and the the American people will try and distance themselves from the racism of believing in enforcing immigration laws. No. He won and now arrests of undocumented immigrants have gone up thirty two percent. And guess what, that's, guess what the result of that is? Uh, I'm going to guess uh, in, the immigration might be down a smidge. Down 61%. Dang. Illegal <laughs> immigration down 61% Ooh. since election day. Even PolitiFact says it's mostly true. And mostly because apparently we need more data to be drawn uh, on this and also because it's PolitiFact and they suck. <laughs> so even they say mostly true, 61% since election day. That's so again, what, what, is, significant. what is the net result here, if we think about it? Is, is the net result, again, if you start enforcing immigration laws, all that's going to happen? is we're going to see communities decimated and people are going to be less safe. Or if you enforce immigration laws on illegal immigrants, instead of sauntering on over and having every Tom, Dick, and Harry and member of the Latin Kings following suit, they're going to say, Don't come! This guy, he mean what he say! <laughs> he mean what he say! I keep they fly me back on ice air! He mean what he say! <laughs> no fruit and flower miles? <laughs> <laughs> It was a blackout day, man! <laughs> it's not playing around! <laughs> I thought I was getting double miles. They're all blackout days! <laughs> so maybe when we're seeing, we're gonna get lit. And I'm the one that's in trouble. You're in trouble. I didn't Honestly. say they were drug dealers, I just did a racist accent. <laughs> so maybe when you look at the result, we deport illegal immigrants. Illegal immigration goes down, and crime seems to go down in cities with illegal immigration along with it. Maybe, maybe, just maybe the public safety issue that we're talking about, the public safety, meaning those who are legally documented, law-abiding citizens, will actually be better off. Maybe all of this evidence points toward the fact that the goals are not incongruent, that police don't have to decide between enforcing immigration laws and keeping the public safe, but that actually enforcing immigration laws does keep the public safe. Oh, Vox, you almost had us too. Dean Kane coming up next. Home Body Break with Steven Crowder and Not Gay Jerry. Summer's a great time to be active outside and enjoy your favorite activities, like tending to this garden. But it's not without its pests as you can see with these bees. I'm highly allergic. The good news is that you can create a homemade solution without the use of any synthetic, unnatural, or harshful chemicals that could harm the environment. Just mix three parts vinegar and a couple drops of peppermint in a household spray bottle. Mix and allow to sit for 20 minutes. Then gently spray on the affected area and watch as your unwanted guests I think it's only pissing them off. Return to greener pastures. The key is to find the effect. 
Oh my I god, it hurts! Happened. The peppermint was supposed to help! Why were there so many of them? Home Body Break with Steven Crowder and Not Gay Jared. Sponsored by Mug Club. would appreciate the kata because that's actually mm. it's it's a big part of the ancient japanese way and i think he's like a 16th japanese what is How, he anyway I don't know. what tough. is he um but uh you know him you love him he's one of the regulars here in ladder with crowder at real dean kane and you and dean are good we're good now dean thank you for being on the show brother we're good we're good now I thought we, we talked about this. Yeah, let's talk about it afterwards. Let's oh, talk- you said don't talk about it on the air. That's yeah. fine with me. That's, let's just avoid talking fine, about it fine now. Fine with me. You, you go ahead and be that way, Jared. We'll just, just, we'll just push it to the side for now. So you've been hosting the Today Show a lot, uh, and you were talking about your recent project there. Tell us about this, this documentary, um, because I wanted to talk about something else from your Twitter, because, as you know, that's always news now. But tell me about, <laughs> tell me about this documentary first. All right, there's two documentaries. One's a feature. Uh, it's called Architects of Denial. Comes out October sixth. Okay. Um, and the other is is a television special. Comes back, comes out later in the fall. Um, and they're both dealing with um, genocide in a way. Um, specifically, Architects of Denial is dealing with genocide genocides that occur all over the world and have occurred. Um, specifically targeting the Armenian genocide yeah. that started in 1915 until 1923, um, where where 1.5 million Armenians were were killed. 900,000 Greeks and 750,000 Assyrians, just a whole bunch of people, awful stuff. We hadn't even coined the term genocide at that point in time. No, but it didn't catch on. It, was, forward, it became more of a fad later on, the, the genocide. Yeah, it wasn't it hot yet. Well, you, you know, you, the honest truth is Hitler has that quote, and he says, you know, after all, who remembers the Armenians? And that's what it's about. Because if you mm. don't call it what it is and you don't na- na- name it and label it, you can just pretend you know it never existed. It's that history written by the victors kind of thing. Wow. So this documentary goes and explores that, goes through it all, provides it more incontrovertible proof. And, and it's, it's, it's hopefully something that can shine a light on the situation. So people like um, – there are people who deny it. Do you know anybody who denies it? Yeah, well, it? you know, it's funny that you lay that up for me. Uh, <laughs> Chank from the Young Turks, uh, he wrote a whole, he, yes, he wrote a whole, I don't, I don't know who lays up like this. Is that, what kind it's of a finger roll. It's a finger roll. Oh, you got to be high up. You got to be real high up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Up. Apparently, Dean Kane moonlights the Harlem Globetrotter. He does. I don't know. We, we, uh, <laughs> I knew about this. Um, yeah, there are some people out there who, who deny it. And I'll be honest, I, I don't know a ton about it uh, outside of what I've read because I knew that this guy denied it. I sort of assumed, we, you know, briefly touched on it in history class, and I thought, well, you know, hold on a second, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, nice mug there. I thought, maybe mm-hmm. I'm wrong. Um, and then when I looked into it, it did seem in, like incontrovertible proof. Why is it an issue that some people um, deny ever occurred? You'd have to ask Chink that question. I'd love to see him on your show. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Everyone I'd love would. to see that. I would watch that for sure. Yes. Uh, I think, you know, and even calling themselves the Young Turks, I mean, those are the groups that, that perpetrated the genocide. It's right. unbelievable. Yeah. Um, people deny it because they, it, it's ugly. You know, there's a lot of things you don't want to face. Uh, you look at the stuff that we did, you know, in, in the United States uh, to the Native American population. There's some ugly stuff. But if you own it, you can move on. You can call it what it is and you move on. Obviously, I didn't do it. You didn't do it. But our ancestors did. And sure. and that's what took that's what took place. And, and calling it what it is is very important. Yeah. People want to deny it. They want to make it go away and pretend it never existed. It's like, you know, the Iranians denying the Holocaust. Good luck with that, but they, they, you know, Ahmadinejad. I remember seeing him go. Oh, there was no Holocaust. That kind of stuff is insane. Also, none of our men here like Dick. It does not happen in Iran. No. They are all about the Punani. You stop. Um, it goes back to Baghdad, Bob. You know, yeah. the Americans are committing suicide by the hundreds at the gates of Baghdad. No, bro, they're not. No, <laughs> no, no, they're not. Um, as a matter of fact, if you look at if you look just like the uh, if you look at the heat-seeking cameras. Uh, from the American uh, war jets going overhead. You can just see guys in the hills. They get lonely. <laughs> Dean, let me ask you this. So, so you tweeted this out, and I don't want to be one of the guys who just, boom, catchy headline. Someone said you should run for office, and you did say you were seriously considering that now because we've asked you that before, and you're like, ah, probably not. Are you seriously considering that, or was that tongue-in-cheek? And do you need a running mate? I'm just <laughs> that. Yes. Hopper and I. Yes. Do it again. Uh, uh, you know, here's the thing. 
there's times where where uh, politics are my business is ugly. It's ugly, but politics is not really when ugly. you're in it. Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's the, I'm looking at our, our new senator, our newly elected senator from United States from uh, California, our U.S. Senator uh, Kamala Harris. And the thing she was tweeting, I've never looked at her Twitter feed. I started looking at her Twitter feed and I started losing my mind. Yeah. You know, uh, one of them in particular was uh, an undocumented immigrant is not a criminal. I don't, yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah, yes, you are a criminal. I mean, and I so I tweeted back in what country? In what country? You know, because pick another country. Yeah. You try to go to, to Canada or Mexico or somewhere in Europe. Guess what? Yeah, you're a criminal. Well, Mexico they're so, pretty pretty rough on that too. You you don't necessarily get out unscathed. Did she respond to you? No, of course not. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, you're still <laughs> Dean Kane, so I thought she might be like. Oh, my but you're a dick. But still, call I don't think she, re- <laughs> she responds to a lot of stuff. I just see a lot of rhetoric coming out that is right on the party line. That's yeah. extremely left. Now I'm socially very liberal. So in California, if I decided to run for U.S. Senate, if Feinstein does go ahead and retire, if that's the case, um, you know, being socially liberal but fiscally and foreign policy wise, being very conservative, I think that matches up countrywide very well, and certainly within California. So we'll see. The only thing is, you sure it's a good idea to keep uh, appearing on this program, if that's the case? <laughs> <laughs> I am not afraid at all. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a rule. I mean, I'm a, I'm a rule breaker. I, I just won't, I don't, I'm not going to fall, you know, in the well, party line. Well, the only one who has continued to do that is, is uh, uh, Senator Ted Cruz and Governor Mike Huckabee. Carlos Fiorina fell off with some politicians, and then afterward, they're like, oh my gosh, no, they play, they play Spot the Tranny, and they did some jokes, so... Um, I think it's changed though now. For for better or worse, I think Trump has opened that up where people are like, well, okay. So he was on a show where someone said something offensive or one time he tweeted something that someone didn't like. I, I, yeah. I don't think that's enough of a deal breaker with the voters anymore, aside from the ones who will hate you anyway. Well, I, I agree with that. I think that's a good thing. It's better that way because at the end of the day, I don't care what image you're going to project out there. You're still a human being and yeah, you still do all the regular things and make silly jokes. Jokes have become this thing that is such a big deal jokes have to be made there must be jokes if there's not jokes if you can't joke about something if it's so serious you can't joke about it then it's either you know horrific like gassing children in syria or you have no sense of humor yeah not saying that gassing children in syria is funny no no, he's not not. saying that and we will (laughs) not write jokes about that into tomorrow's show map it will not happen (laughs) just because dean kane made this just yeah you know it's one of those things whenever someone comes out and they say in public like can you believe that so and so said this and even if it's a for example what was it that uh commentator we were talking about and the young turks were talking about it he said serena williams and her boyfriend husband were having a baby he said oh so that baby it's going to be like uh like uh chocolate milk that was it and they're like can you believe he said that like the color, like a light brown, like a light brown. Yeah, chocolate milk. milk. I mean, I, it was one of those things. That it couldn't possibly be less controversial. And then it makes you, you, you know, do some research. We were talking about it yesterday because they say this person is actually nicknamed nasty. I'm going, well, hold on a second. You just said that him saying chocolate milk is nasty. So why is he nicknamed nasty? Is it because he says non-nasty things like this? And I think it actually forces more people to look into your history, to look into context, and they realize. It's not all that offensive because the left has pushed everything as offensive. And that's the thing. I don't think almost anything's offensive. Right. I don't, I'm not getting offended by stuff. And I, I think that's the way it should be. You know, on my Twitter feed, I do have a, a, a quote from uh, Martin Luther King talking about his I, I have a dream speech and talking about how he has a dream that one day, you know, his children will be judged not by the color of his skin, but by the content of their character. I don't see race. I don't see sex. I don't. I mean, I see sex. So yeah, I, I'm, yeah, of course, you know, everyone so. sees sex. We work on the internet, <laughs> but, buddy. Uh, but I don't see it. I don't care. None of that means anything to me. So I don't. There's no special dispensation to anybody. If you don't train, see sex with Dean Kane and like, you don't care, you're dead. You're dead if you don't see sex with Dean Kane. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Dean. I'm sorry. It's just. Thank you. You're, you're in a track. I'm going to make a. What is it? A GIF? GIF? GIF. GIF. Uh, you know. It, don't, it doesn't matter how, what, how you pronounce it. Someone right now on Twitter will say that you're wrong. So I've done both. And uh, either way. And you know what I say to that person? They're wrong. Yeah, I know. And now you're going to never ending, never ending tweets, never ending tweets. Mm. It's like the caliber war where you're like, hey, nine, mil- nine millimeter to 45 only. And then someone comes in. three. It just it never, never ever goes away. And then away. your career is over. And then you're. I don't mind the stopping power of 45. Just going to throw it out there. Uh, OK. All right, all right, all right. I don't mind it. No, I don't mind any of it. I just think I, I, I'd, rather just, you know, I'd rather someone carry a 38 or a 380 than nothing. We're like, well, you might as well just carry a pointy stick. Ah, I'm not so sure about that. That pointy stick will go through you all the way a few times. Yes, exactly. It'll puncture some holes. So, uh, Dean, so 
if you so so it could be a possibility if you maybe think about running for office. I would, I mean, I would encourage you to because obviously you remove a lot of the arguments of the left that uh, you know you're a, you're a Nazi, you're hateful because you've got you've got some ethnicity in you. I don't know what it is, but it's enough to check a box. It's Japanese. I don't qualify as white, I guess. <laughs> right. Or it's like, Let me put it this way: I have more Japanese in me than Elizabeth Warren has Native American. This is true. Um, or do I? Oh, wait, <laughs> there's a joke. See, there's, that's a joke. That's a joke, right? It's a, it's a joke about the Land of, La- uh, Land of Lakes Butter Lady. Uh, <laughs> and then it, let us know if you do. And we will want to talk about it and have you on and uh, discuss this documentary. We have to get going. We have Blair White coming up at Real Dean Kane. Man, I'm looking forward to it. We'll see. Maybe he'll be one of uh, our elected representatives. Stay tuned. Blair White. Just 1%. Well, Jared, Jared said 2%. I, I think we should be safe. Uh, Go for two. If just a couple percent of you people out there, ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club, join up. Listen, it allows us to hire a lot of the other people here on YouTube. allows us to create a coalition of a lot of other people around who've uh, been screwed by the new anti, I guess you would say anti-controversial speech algorithms. That's right. Um, it's $99 annual. It's 69 for students, veterans, or active military. And now we actually have the ability on the CRTV app for you to listen audio when you're on the go. Can't tell you how much we appreciate it. We've seen a, a ton of people signing up for, for Mug Club. Not only do you get this hand-etched mug, but you do get louder with Crowder daily. You get Not Gay Jared and Courtney's Morning Grinders. You also go get access to Mark Levin, Michelle Malkin, plenty of other people. And you can help keep the, the doors open and everyone employed. Here's one thing I will say. There's a seven-day free trial there. But I also know that a lot of you cannot be bothered to click off of this URL I don't blame you. I'm a child of the millennial era. Millenni- was of the millennium? I'm a part of the millennial generation? I don't know. Mm. Did you always, we're more likely, more likely to use paper towels, not napkins, as millennials. I find that to be true. Also irrelevant. I thought they were the same thing. But true. Guess how many napkins you can stuff in a mug? Well, you'll we'll have to purchase one to find out. I, uh, 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 I don't even know what I was talking about. What was I talking about before this? Talking about millennials. You're talking about uh, clicking oh, off Oh, millennials. To you the can't thing. click off. So there yeah. will be actually here on YouTube. Because YouTube is going hard and fast now with their Google algorithms to remove fake news. Uh, we're going to be offering two weeks free of The Daily Show on YouTube. Two weeks free. Right now, there's still a seven-day free trial, but we are going to give away the show for two weeks for a limited period of time. Tune in to see uh, when that will be in our videos or maybe next week's show. It's likely going to be within the next month. Two weeks completely free. After that, you can decide if it's if it's enough value to you or not. One thing you should know, when you purchase cable, for example, ESPN is a good example. ESPN gets $6 per cable subscription, and they're still laying people off. They're still laying a lot of people off. <laughs> Places like CNN, a lot of these news companies, they don't make their money off of advertising. Not a majority of their money off of advertising. They make it off of cable subscriptions. So when you purchase cable, you're not just kind of, you are directly putting money in the pockets of people who seek to destroy everything you hold dear um, in a very tangible way when you purchase cable. So if you're going to unplug in a very tangible way, you can uh, assist with people who not only are creating this show and the shows at CRTV, but grow it really quickly. We don't want to see people out there with Patreon struggling to get by. Behind the scenes, I know a lot of people are scared, and uh, I think you're going to see us helping a lot of them really soon. Ladderwithcrowder.com slash mugclub. Sign up today. 16, if you're just if you're a yellow belt in karate, don't tell anybody you do karate because that could invite a fight, but you can even get the student discount. Just type in student. Type in ladderwithcredit.com slash mug club. We're cool like that. Because apparently this is a common thing for robots to do. In 2017, you'd think we'd have better w- robots. I never understood that. Apparently that's a part of the robot dance. I've never seen someone do the robot without doing that portion of it. Glad to have our next guest on. Uh, well, Long time coming. You, yeah, at Blair, at, yeah. at Miss MS Blair White on Twitter. Uh, the channel is Blair White X, I believe, on YouTube. Uh, Blair, thank you for being on the program. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is highly requested. I think on both ends. It is. I know. And you, you, you uh, d- did did not like me at one point, and I was I was saddened because I've actually always liked some of your content, even if we don't always agree. And uh, I'm glad that we're finally able to to get you on the show. Yeah, I think that was like a year ago that we had our little Twitter spat. And you could still dislike me. Most people do. I wouldn't blame you at all. No, sometimes you kind of annoy me, but I still like your content overall. Oh. I mean. 
I, I think we have that in common. I hate myself, <laughs> believe me. <laughs> this is yeah. the right place for self-loathing. Um, so Blair, for our audience, people who might not necessarily be familiar with you or people listening uh, sort of terrestrially, explain to them, I mean, you're, you're, you're transgender. Um, would you consider yourself, I don't want to mislabel you, conservative, libertarian, alt-right, just sort of a Trump fan? How would you consider yourself? I am a Nazi. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, um, well, there you go. <laughs> oh, and YouTube just demonetized. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I have always roughly described my political leanings as center-right, and I actually just took the uh, political compass test, and it came out as pretty much exactly center-right, so I guess that's fair to say. Okay. Okay. Um, what is that like? We've had, I think, I think you're friends with Theron Meyer. We've had Theron Meyer on the show. It, it, it must be pretty tough because obviously, you know, transgenders get ostracized and we're, we're no, we're no strangers to great tranny jokes in the show, but we're no strangers to any jokes in the show. We're not going <laughs> to lie about it. Uh, yeah. but then, so you get that side of it, but then you get the hate, the spite from the left being an expected sort of contributing member of the far left LGBTQ AI, actually IA, I just read this yesterday in Austin. IA yeah, is how they they're They changed it again. They changed it again. Damn it. It's, is it tough? It's QIA and then another A. It's two A's. For ally? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh. But yeah, I don't know how much you know about like the general reaction to my channel from that side of the political spectrum, but I'm basically seen as the antichrist of the transgender community. It's really ridiculous. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I just go against quite a lot of what, especially, you know, transgender activists right. preach. Because I think that a lot of the times the people that they prop up to advocate on their behalf and speak about their issues are insane. So, okay, I was going to say that. You really do, You, you I, it must be tough you get the short end of the stick because I tell you what, we get, email, on a personal level, I will say this, behind the scenes, n nearly every transgender person outside of Theron Meyer we've had in the program has been a crazy person. And we've either had to block them <laughs> afterward. Like they, we had people send us books, uh, you know, who we just respectfully disagreed with. I won't name names, but people can go watch them. The longest emails you have ever and seen. And we're like, gosh, you know, so it, when these people go out and they're your ambassadors, you must be sitting there with just, it must be like a permanent bruise in your forehead. Yes, because I don't like the fact that transgender is politicized at all, because to me, it needs to remain a medical issue, a psychological issue, you know, the issue of neurology and shit. Like, it shouldn't be, I don't know if I can curse, I'm sorry. Um, you can't, Jared's job is just harder. Okay, it shouldn't be politicized at all. So if it is gonna be politicized, I at least want like smart people advocating for it, and there just isn't. Yeah. Instead you get, you know, the Stephanie, whatever his name is, the 35 year old. Oh, oh Stephanie. Will, 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 yes. Willa Sakowitz or something. Yeah, Stephanie, very Stephani. clever naming there, yeah. Yeah, you get like, Caitlyn Jenner, who every once in a blue moon says something smart, but is overall just a really creepy individual. You get yeah. just the worst people. And I'm so I'm sitting here. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like in my life, being trans is not that huge of an issue. I don't walk around and feel the weight of these activists because I have a normal life. Right. But having these conversations online, it is frustrating to get conflated with those people so often. Well, let me, let me ask you this, because I also know like conservatives, they'll, they'll host you and then they'll just do an about face. So I try and be transparent about where I line up. Um, who concerns you more, these activists who represent you or maybe people like me who are more conservative going, you know what, I understand the bathroom issue for parents and kids and uh, it's a conversation that needs to be had. What is it for you that's more troubling? Which side? I find that the people on the right, I relate to a lot more because to me, they're just easier to turn around on certain things once they realize you're not insane. Whereas the people on the left, they tend to just be very um, religious about the beliefs on this topic. So for me, I, I definitely do get more shit from the left. Yeah. Um, but as far as the bathroom, like the bathroom issue, neither side has really done a good job of convincing me that this issue matters as much as people want it to be, sure. people like, pretend it is. Um, you have on the right, you have the people who, you know, there's often this talking point of if trans people use the bathrooms they want, there's gonna be a surge of rapes and assaults and all the worst things in the world. And on the left, you have people saying that if trans people can't use the bathrooms that they want or that they identify with, that they're gonna be assaulted and murdered in the bathroom and they're gonna kill themselves over the stress of it. And I'm just like, oh my God, all these histrionics over bathrooms. It's like, 
I don't like being expected to suspend my knowledge of how the real world works to like, have <laughs> arguments because in the real world, like people are not, none of this is happening in bathrooms. None right. of it. Well, so, I, so not suspending belief in the real world. So not a big Bill Nye fan, I'll take it. He did this whole spectrum. Uh, <laughs> um, well, here's the issue I think a lot of people didn't understand. So you had Charlotte, right? And there was uh, a city ordinance basically said you have to let anyone use any bathroom they want. And then the state said, no. You know, that's not what we're going to do. And because businesses are going to be harmed with this, no, we're going to make it. You use your biological gender. And then so I would imagine we'd probably agree that if a private business wants to make a decision, you know, for example, in New York, landlords can be sued for using improper pronouns. I mean, yeah. it is a rule book that changes, I would imagine, even for you. It's it's hard to follow sometimes. We don't know what we're supposed to do or say. And then, of course, people like me yeah. who don't do it anyway. That's why I have so much <laughs> sympathy, because... Trans people have been around for a long time, but the issue and the politicization of trans people is what, three or four years old? I mean, this issue came up in 2013 or something. Yeah. So to me, I have no expectation for anyone who, you know, this isn't a part of the world to like fully understand it, especially when, like you said, the rule book does change so often. Yeah. There are people in the trans community that take issue with the fact that I say the word transsexual because they think that it should be transgender because it should be, you know, more all encompassing. There are people that say that I can't say the word tranny because that's a slur and it's equated with the N word. It's like, yeah. it just changes so much. How can you expect outsiders? I know she didn't just say the T word. Yes, yes, you didn't just say the T word, exactly. <laughs> that shows you how different it is. Well, you know what, that's because I, I got a lot of flack uh, at one point. It's interesting that you bring up transsexual. And this was because I had a psychiatrist on my show who works with a lot of trans, uh, transsexual people and uh, as well as transvestites. And she made the differentiation. And she said transvestites are people who dress up in women's clothing. Sometimes they put on makeup, sometimes they make up, but they don't go through the sexual reassignment surgery. Transsexuals are people who go through the sexual reassignment surgery. She said clinically, that's how we... Uh, define them. Yeah. And I said, okay, do most transgenders go through the sexual reassignment? She said, no, uh, less than 12%, which is the high figure. She said, no, more uh, of today's transgenders would have much more in common with yesterday's transvestites than actual what was determined transsexuals. And people got yeah. really mad when I tweeted that out. I, I'm not saying I'm right, but it does seem within the bounds of reason. You can you can tell me wh why I'm wrong. I'm I'm open to it. No, I, that was actually, I think, the spat that we had a year ago when you said that. Okay. And honestly, since then, I've really come to see your point because when I initially got angry at you for saying that, it was, I think I was like a month or two into doing YouTube videos and I had not really dove into the trans community and how they really feel. I always assumed all trans people were just like me. And so coming from that assumption, you see someone saying that trans people are different from like cross-dressers and transvestites and I'm like... Well, yes, I am. But then you look at the fact that the definition of trans has been expanded so greatly yeah. that people do fall under that umbrella now, which is which is crazy. And that's one of the... You're a rarity. I will say this. You're a rarity. Because we had a, a mayor on here, Jess, Jess Herbst, who said, uh, mm -hmm. you know, well, the problem is for people like me, barely passables. Well, this mayor tossed on a moo moo and... Calder's, the moo -moo. you know what I mean? That was it. Like, obviously there's some, yeah. there's no, there's some buy-in here, Blair. I, I salute that. Um, and, uh, that's, that's the, I think what's inflated the number. I'm sure you've seen like the number of transgenders in the United States has gone up so rapidly. Oh, yeah. Well, most of them are not super committed and a lot of them just go back. Yeah. And, and what concerns me even more than that, because listen, people can call themselves whatever they want. You can label yourself as non-binary, transgender, transsexual, trans anteater. I don't care. But the thing is, what concerns me is the amount of new cases of trans children. I think uh, in London, there's like a four times increase in the amount of kids being referred to gender clinics in hopes of, you know, going on puberty blockers and hormones. And uh, it just really, I don't know if you know my stance on kids transitioning, but I am vehemently against it. So that concerns me even more. I, I think it's, well, uh, here, there's a difference, right? But I also think children should not be in, in charge of making any serious decisions regarding, you know, their life's path, certainly not sexuality at that point in their life or gender. Because they Common don't... Common sense, right? Right. Like, when I was a kid, I, I said, when I grow up, I want to be a woman uh, so that I can still uh, have sleepovers. My brother and I shared bunk beds. And I was like, oh, that's yeah. going to be a bummer. I want to be a woman when I grow up so that I can share bunk beds with my brother and be his wife. My parents were like, you don't know how that works. <laughs> um, but now, you know, you watch the Jenner special and this person goes, well, my daughter said, I'm a boy how that's it how much more clear can you get i'm like be a parent she's four yeah it's it's ridiculous and you know the idea that because this is the top this is the part that people don't like talking about right and i don't even see enough 
you know, conservative talking points about this, which should be, I think, the main focus if you're trying to argue against children transitioning. Okay. The fact that transitioning sterilizes you, going on puberty blockers makes it so you can never have children. That's a huge deal. Yeah. To me, the conversation should just end at that. I don't think beyond that there should be any more conversation. But there is. It's very frustrating. So that's what I always bring up first. It's like you really think a 13-year-old she has the capacity to decide that they don't want to ever have kids. I transitioned at 20. Okay. And I haven't even been thinking about it because even at 20, most people don't think about having kids. Right. And now I'm sterile and I can never have kids, which is really shitty because, you know, I assume as I get older, I might want some. Um, right. So it's, it's frustrating. So, so you have some issues even with the transition because you, there are ramifications that now might, might change your outlook, you think? Well, there are ramifications. I will say this. From the time I was this big, I was struggling with gender dysphoria, and it only got worse as I got closer to adulthood. And so I came to a crossroads where I said I can live with this debilitating thing that's affecting my life the moment I wake up to the moment I go to sleep, or I can transition. Uh, And I would never take it back because my quality of life has increased more than I could ever say. But um, I would never endorse transition per se. And the reason I say that is because I think there's a specific small group of people in which transitioning will actually alleviate your dysphoria. Mm-hmm. But I mean, no offense, Crowder, but if you suddenly picked up and transitioned, I don't think you'd be able to alleviate any dysphoria. I don't think you'd no. be able to. No, you know, a full sex it. change is not going to alleviate this this mess here either way. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so the fact that transition is is uh, posed as like the cure yeah. is, I think troubling because it's just not effective for most people. And you see that with, you know, the suicide rates right. transition, which are very similar. So for me, it's hard to say don't do it because it is kind of your best bet. There is no cure. But part of the problem with accepting transition as the end all be all is it becomes politically incorrect to speak against it. And then right. there's no funding or research into finding an actual cure. Right. So it's like a yeah. Well, it's interesting. Okay, a couple of things. That you, it's interesting that you say cure because people are now going to lump you in with Mike Pence. You know, they're going to be like, oh, you're saying cure. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. but you're right. I, I did notice, you know, when I, I, I've watched your content and I've read your tweets where you readily admit that the suicide rate actually doesn't get doesn't get much better. In some studies, it actually gets worse. The more comprehensive studies that come through. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, it, it really is fascinating to see. You're straightforward about that. So you say cure. Well, what do you mean uh, as far as research, like a cure for gender dysphoria? How would you categorize gender dysphoria? <laughs> and how do you want to see it cured, to use your word? Well, it's well, it's not how I would classify it. I mean, gender dysphoria is classified by the DSM as a mental disorder. And okay. so, you know, I'm not an expert, so I can't sit here and say this will be the cure, we should look into this. But um, I would like there to be something you can take. I'm not advocating conversion therapy, which is more often than not throughout history proven to be more barbaric and less helpful than helpful. Right. But but the fact that as of now in 2017, the only answer people have is transitioning when it's so faulty, uh, I just wish there was something else. Because it's very hard to explain to someone who this is not a part of their world, how debilitating gender dysphoria is. And sure. I, I know that on the outside, it just sounds like, oh, someone's unhappy with their gender, get over it. But it is actually very, Yeah. It, it'll, it'll F you up. So for me, I would love for an end to people suffering, you know, yeah. and people twist that. And I had a debate recently with a non-binary genderqueer feminist who <laughs> said that I was asking. It almost sounds like a joke, but I know that's how they it, label it does, themselves. But it does, but it's like serious. But um, said that I was advocating for transgenocide because I wanted there to be a cure. He's like, oh, you want there to be no more trans people? I'm like, how do you twist that? Actually, I don't want anyone else to suffer with this issue because it is right. an issue. Well, I, I, I'm interested. That it's interesting that you say that because, first off, depending on the medical governing body, they, some of them have said, oh, no, it's not a mental disorder now. And we had a psychiatrist yeah. who said a lot of this is, is political. Um, she said that she treats it that way. We've had several who, who have discussed and they have to discuss off air because they're afraid of getting their license revoked if they say this this is a psychiatric condition. Listen, I've suffered, I've talked about this from uh, from mental health issues as far as ADHD, which manifests itself as depression. Um, and it's one of those things I try and talk about in the show. So if hopefully anyone else is out there, they can seek help. Uh, a lot of the time that is uh, therapy, sometimes uh, medicinal, sometimes psychiatric is necessary. So I'm not a stranger to that. And I I am aware of how that can make people unhappy. My issue is when we say, okay, listen, the suicide rate doesn't get any better. Um, 
we don't think that putting people in a shallow grave with a 41% suicide rate is helping them. It doesn't mean we hate someone by saying, you know what, this isn't healthy. Maybe let's find another way to go about this. Now, of yeah. course, we tell all the jokes and stuff because a manly tranny is hilarious. That'll never change. You know, that's still funny. When it, it's won't. Just a... it won't. <laughs> Stephanie is comedic gold, you know? Um, <laughs> well, it's comedic, but it's also disturbing. It is know. disturbing. Um, At first, you're like, oh, haha. Then you're like, oh, that's like a thing. Okay. Yes, that's that's pretty rough. Um, so it, it it it. I mean, it, do you understand that from that point of view? People who maybe disagree yeah. and say, like, listen, I don't know that transgenderism is a thing other than a mental disorder, and we want to help you. And sometimes that's a different route than the transgender community wants. Yeah, I will say sometimes you know the fact that it's a, a mental disorder can be weaponized, and I think that's shitty. I think that right. sometimes the conversation just ends with someone saying, "Oh, you're sick." It's like. Okay, but would you say that to anyone else with any other kind of disorder? I don't think so. Uh, but I completely understand that the left tends to make moral arguments rather than logical ones in the sense that someone saying, hey, doesn't look like it's helping that many people by transitioning, maybe we could seek other you know, options, yeah. suddenly it becomes, oh, you want them to kill themselves. And it's like, they always dangle, they, they're so histrionic about it. Like if yeah. you don't support it, then they're gonna kill themselves. It's like, that's not on me, first of all. Right. Second of all, me advocating for, you know, a cure or people to look into a cure isn't transgenocide. So I, I relate to that because I get the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's interesting that we're, we're, we're talking about this. I'm glad that I think we agree on more than we disagree. I think the, the one I think the one issue on which we disagree is um, and I, I, here's the thing. We disagree. But my point is this, unlike people like Bill Nye, I'm willing to engage in a conversation. You know, um, if I cite a study that the, you know, uh, the brain, the changes occur after cross hormone sexual replacement therapy, I know there are studies that would contradict that. And then I know there are subsequent studies that contradict that. I don't have the time with every single article or video to say, well, then there's this study, there's this study and go down the tree branch. But I'm willing yeah. to entertain the idea of a conversation, even if we disagree. The issue, and I think what's going to be bad for the trans community is people like Bill Nye, first off, who don't know anything about it just saying gender is a spectrum and they do a slam poetry session about it and my yeah. god um that's not a good ad campaign for you no and you know some people view me as like an advocate of sorts just on the other side uh it was never really my intention in fact when i first started my channel uh, i spoke mostly about men's rights and i would speak about um anti-white sentiments in the media and stuff like that and i think it's just kind of a byproduct that a lot of people come to my channel and their only perception of trans people before me was the Riley Dennis's and the Milo Stewart's of the world and what Bill Nye says. And so it's like refreshing to them. So yeah. I guess it's like a byproduct, but um, I'm by no means an advocate and by no means a spokesperson for the trans community. I just kind of speak from my experience and what I research. Yeah, but that's also very moving, I think, to a lot of people. You know, we have Chad with, with AIDS in the show who talked about the gay community. He's gay. He talks about the gay community and he talks about the HIV epidemic. You know, he had someone who was a, a gift giver uh, and he's talked about this uh, in the community. Yeah, he was he was sexually molested in HIV. Uh, and so he advocates for disclosure laws. And then we had, uh, what's his name, Zach Ford from Think Progress, who advocates against disclosure laws. Um, I feel like when you hear people, or I think, I don't, shouldn't say feel like, I think people like you and myself can find a lot more common ground against someone who's saying, you know what, I think it should be a crime to ask people to disclose their AIDS with sexual partners. I think yeah. this is so radical, but they, again, the radical left, has the media pulpit. So that's mainstream transgenderism now. Yeah, and I think with most things, the truth is always somewhere in the middle. And especially especially with this issue, people tend to talk past each other. And it's frustrating because like I said, I don't like the politicization of it. I would prefer if this stayed in the medical field entirely because in my opinion, that's the only place that it can be discussed properly. And there are even issues over there when they discuss it because there's conflicting studies, like you said. Sure. Um, it's just about I mean, we talked about the suicide uh, rates of trans people. Um, there are also a lot of studies that show that the suicide rate uh, becomes less common with familial acceptance and having a supportive family, which I think is great. And so I think that's an important message to put out there. But what I think is also important to say is that um, there should be no authoritarianism surrounding this topic. There shouldn't be laws that dictate how you should interact with people or, you know, I think that's crazy. And I think it's it's a bad look. Like, why would someone ever want to hire a trans person who instantly becomes a liability to their business if yep. they slip up on a pronoun? Like, that's why, I, that's why I say, even though on the surface it may seem like I would have more of an issue with you, it actually is them because they're the ones that put me in this position in the first place. Right. So... 
And yeah. most, a lot of them aren't willing to entertain a discussion. Even if you said, you know what, I'm going to come double barrels blazing, I have a problem with what you said, we'd still yeah. welcome you on the show. I mean, I think, I'd like to think we have a pretty decent track record of doing that. It's just pretty hard to get people who who disagree with us on the program. Um, so it's rare that we get productive discussions. But uh, hey, let me ask you this. Maybe you can be a tiebreaker here. Did you see the, the Berkeley... Uh, well, I don't know. It was reported as, as a transgender. Did you see the Berkeley transgender who ripping up the Trump thing and threatening to beat the crap out of the guys? The big redhead. Okay. Is that a male to female transgender? Is that a female to male? Is it just a gender queer person? Because we couldn't figure it out. Because And the article just said transgender. Um, I probably have about as good of a di an idea as you do. Okay. But okay. From, but from what I read, I think it was a male to female transsexual because they got well, transsexual, trans person, because they got upset over being called male. Um, so you think it's again, male to female? Again, we're talking about the representation thing. There was a Zoe Turr, I think was yeah, their almost, name. Almost, Zoe Turr. almost strangled like, Ben Shapiro. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what better argument for the fact that like trans women are like inherently feminine and like female-brained to have these burly like dudes walking around threatening to kick people's ass. Like, stop. <laughs> Just stop. Well, here, here's the thing. I don't know because <clears throat> if it is a male to female, we actually were doing a whole, we were doing a whole uh, a a analysis earlier. If it is a male to female transgender, it's a male to female transgender who then dresses and cuts his or her hair like a male. Like I said, I yeah. don't know the rule book at this point. Um, and, and what's funny is I saw the, the, the leftist kind of reporting on it, you know, this guy committed hate speech. I don't think the guy knew that was a transgender when he said, oh, big man, no. you know, like crumpling up the flag. And then he goes, yes. I'm a woman. And the guy this doesn't say a, anything. This, He's like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's it. This is what I said before. It's about suspending being forced to suspend your knowledge of how the real world actually works. When it comes to pronouns, people act like it's a thought process. It's not. Yeah. Using someone's pronouns is a subconscious you know, judgment based on secondary sex characteristics. In other words, what you view someone as. Someone walks into a store, they look like a woman, you're gonna say, ma'am, it's not a thought. And so this idea that you should walk around and like ask people their pronouns before you talk, it's just not real right it's, it doesn't work like that you know yeah well and that's why i didn't use pronouns when i brought you on the show because i'm liable to slip up with you i would probably very likely just instinctively say she um with uh mayor jess herbst it would it would be a struggle for me to not say he because i'm looking at a man you know and it's yeah. just it, it's it's just instinctive so i just try and avoid it because i know i'll i'll i'll, I'll make the mistake and step on that landmine at some point <laughs> yeah it's and then, but then there's also the people on the on the other side who act as if they will only ever use the pronouns that are congruent with someone's biological sex, and that's not real either. Because if you and I were to go to dinner just to hang out, um, and you got there after me and I was already there, and you told the person at the front of the restaurant, um, "I'm here to see my friend," and you said the guy in the red shirt, and I'm wearing the red shirt, like he wouldn't take you to my table. It's, you know what I mean? Right, so yeah. it's, just about, it's just about approaching it and being like practical about it. It's all very practical and people make it out to be something that it's not. Right. Well, that's a good point. That is a good point. And I think like we were all saying, you know, here we're all saying she and Edward the sound guy is more traditional. So he was like, ah, uh, she, uh, well, he didn't know, you know, and it's again, he's not, it's not hateful. And even if we disagree with the sort of modern transgender movement, it doesn't mean that the pronouns are a manifestation of hate. It's just, it is bizarre. And uh, I think Bill Nye is the worst, but I'm glad <laughs> to have a tiebreaker. So there you go. There you go. Male to female, transgender. Naki Jared thought it was just a lesbian. I thought it was a lesbian. Uh, I mean, it looked like a, a big <laughs> dyke. So. It did. It did. It's really, really difficult. Um, and and it's, it's, it's not even, at that point, we're not even making jokes about it. We're sit, we were sitting there looking at the story in the pitch meeting going, I am confused. I, and we had about four or five people come in. My wife couldn't determine. She was like, that's a man. No, wait. That's... I don't know. And that's different because it's very clear, obviously, if you say you're transgender, like you said, someone would just say, didn't know, would say that woman in the, the black dress. Um, someone like this, it would be that your guess is as good as mine in the yeah. Nazi tank top. <laughs> yeah, which is why the authoritarianism doesn't work because you can't expect people to know what you're still confused about. That person looked confused. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. You can't expect other people to know. So. Yeah, and the person looked very upset. Uh, okay, Blair White, uh, we have to get going. Great conversation. What's, where's the best place for people to find you and support you? Uh, YouTube.com slash Blair White X. There's an E at the end of Blair. Everyone forgets that. And Twitter.com is Ms. Blair White, MS Blair White. Okay, do you have a Patreon going on or anything like that? 
Yeah, I do. Uh, it's patreon.com slash Blair White. Okay. I figured because right now with YouTube, everyone's being squeezed, so it's tough. Yeah, yeah. get the coin. You got to get the coin. Yeah, you got to get the coin. Bitcoins for all the libertarians out there. Also, uh-huh. she'll send you a free joint. There we go. We just got you the libertarian vote. Um, <laughs> Blair White at Miss Blair White. We'll be back after this. Home Body Break with Steven Crowder and Not Gay Jerry. Summer's a great time to be active and enjoy some of your favorite activities outside, like riding a bicycle. Even better, it's a great time to teach a new friend. But most important, safety first. Ensuring that people are wearing the right gear to ensure a pleasurable and injury-free experience. It's also paramount to learn the proper safety hand signals. For example, this means I'm turning left, this means I'm turning right, and most importantly, this means stop. Now that we've taken the proper measures, it's time to stay safe and have fun. Home Body Break with Steven Crowder and Not Gay Jared. Sponsored by Mug Club. for that we return to the drowning dance because we a lot of you back. apparently like to see us pantomiming death death uh thanks so much dean kane and blair white i yes. really enjoyed the conversations uh nice folks hope we have them back a huge week next week too we have a lot of great guests uh we have patrick moore who is one of the founders of greenpeace mm-hmm. phd in ecology uh and he says the entire modern climate change movement is bullcrap that is interesting but he only has a PhD in ecology, oh. so he's a denier. Let's be ah. clear on that. He does not have a bachelor's in mechanical those engineering. Those Koch brother checks are clearing. Yes, those Koch brother <laughs> checks are clearing. And uh, we have a few other people. Oh, we have Diamond and Silk. We have Diamond and Silk will be on the show. <laughs> yes. Diamond and Silk on Monday, actually. I remember when that was just became huge. I'm like, we have to have these ladies on. Well, they have well, a publicist happening. who's very much like, what, like do you, what do you want to have them on for? Diamond and Silk are very busy. And they're like, of course they are. Of course they are. That's perfect. If I were Diamond and Silk, I would be... I would be the biggest princess so in the world. So exclusive. I would be so exclusive. There's no way I would do this show. No. Um, so, you know, we were talking about this earlier with, with, you know, you made the point about Vox. Yeah. My point is, you look at Vox, and I think Vox, to their credit, more than, more than most, they do a very good job of presenting their videos as being straight down the middle, unbiased, just the facts. I don't know, yeah. is there editing? I don't know if it's a voiceover. Is there, there are little cartoon graphics that just pull on my heartstrings? But they do a good job. And then you start looking around, and you're like, I, I know. You smell that? <laughs> I, some I, I step in something? Yeah. And then you start looking through cross-referencing things. You're like, oh, there's all the sleight of hand. There's all the bull crap. It's everywhere. Oh, yeah, no, it's true. And by, by the way, anyone on Vox who thinks that we've misrepresented them, you're welcome to come on the show. Just like anyone at Young Turks, we we don't call anyone out and not offer them recourse. That's our rule here. Yes. So anyone, anyone who we've called out, or I mean, not everyone we've ever made a joke about, like in the opening monologue, and we're like, I don't like it. Like if Rob Schneider Good says, there is no fascist gigolo, we'll be like, well, Rob, come on, you're a comedian. But still, we don't call people out without giving them recourse. And here's why. There are a couple of things here. Um, the best way to shine a light on bullcrap like that is uh, live debate, live conversation in real time. Anyone, including us, anyone can misrepresent what someone else is saying uh, in a video or in an article. So, for example, we could have just said, hey, Vox makes an emotional argument and only shown that portion when instead they could have made a really valid constitutional plea as to why there need to be sanctuary cities. They didn't really do that. I encourage you to go watch the videos. However, I could easily lie to you that way. Okay, 
Uh, we've had people. We've had people do that all the time. We've had people do that sure. with what we say. Uh, we've had people. Uh, we've seen people on the right do it, people on the left, and we've seen it going both ways. We've seen people do it with Dave Rubin. Yeah. yeah. I think we've seen people do it with Dave Rubin having me on the show. He's a guy you think everyone would just love, but it turns out it's just kind of the opposite reaction. Everyone's like, <laughs> no, ah. mo- no, most people like him. Most people like him, but the, the people who go down the middle think they're going to make a lot of friends often find themselves making enemies on both sides as well. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, someone like a, a, a like Blair, Blair, White. Blair White probably has a lot of enemies, and that's why you know I wanted to be friendly even though we disagree. And, and, and you can tweet me at S. Crowder, or maybe tweet at Not K. Jared. I do try to do a job here of not changing my positions or values in the face of someone who might make it uncomfortable to express so. So it would be inconsistent of me to say, like, yeah, Blair, I'm totally on board and transgender. No, I, I still need to be clear. Like, listen, I think you're a good person, but I also think that maybe a way to assist people who suffer from gender dysphoria is not the, the, the sex change. But you know what? That's what Blair advocated. Sure. So we found common ground where we didn't even expect to. I thought that might have been a pushback point. Again, that's why the live conversation is so important. The Internet can allow anybody to be an expert. You can take your eight-year-old son. Give him a week and say, dissect this monologue from Noam Chomsky, and they could make him look like an idiot. So please go watch the original Vox video. Please go watch the original Young Turks video that we talked about yesterday. Go watch their original video. Go to their original source and see if it's an accurate representation. Okay, go watch the Bill Nye show. We often believe in more context, not less. Bring back up. Bring drinks. What? For the Bill Nye show. What do you mean bring back? Oh, bring back up. You, you said need... bring back up. No. Like bring something back no, up. The just syntax actually, just was don't all do that. Off. We should advocate that here. No, you shouldn't advocate that no. because people will drink themselves to death. It's true. Probably already happening if they're transgender. It's a there's a good there's a 41% chance. It's statistically accurate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this segment got dark. So that's a big way to shine a light on it. But I encourage other people out there to um it, it, it's not about the ones that you see. It's not about the MSNBC. It's not about the Young Turks. It's not just about the Slate. It's about the HuffPo. It's about the Vox. It's about the Brian Williams. It's about CNN. If you watch this show, particularly if you're a Mug Club member uh, and you support the show daily, you'll see that usually we're dissecting issues from CNN. Usually we're dissecting issues from from sources that people see as unbiased. Vox does a good job with that, as Not Gay Jared said. Those are the ones you have to look out for. And it's really easy to be fooled. So you, Google right now is changing their algorithms to, mm-hmm. for example, no longer uh, allow or to throttle any kind of fake news websites. So under that category, it seems like opinion sites will be included. But under legitimate news will be university newspapers. Yeah, yeah. So the Trigley Puffs, who are editor-in-chiefs of newspapers, the I'm a woman and you better respect it, who, by the way, didn't even, <laughs> doesn't even attend that campus. Really? That's what, yeah, that's what... She said? What do we decide on? I don't, I don't know. know. I still don't know. Hey. I just know I'm still going to have nightmares. Edward Sound Guy says he. So um, this is what's going to happen with Google. So you don't need to worry about what you're finding that's blatant. You're going, oh, well, that's coming from Mother Jones. But when you're searching, well, hold on a second. Google's not really necessarily showing you. Uh, that deportations actually lead to less illegal immigration. Mm-hmm. Google may not be showing you that illegal immigration comes with higher crime. Google may not be showing you that um, ICE just needs a 48-hour retainer period to be able to come in and pick up illegal immigrants. Google may not be showing you that illegal immigrants are not likely to uh, alert the local authorities regarding domestic disturbances as it is. Google may not show it to you. Vox may not show it to you. CNN certainly is not going to show it to you. They'll show you Russians peeing on apparently plaster in front of Donald Trump, something along those lines. And they're still seen as legitimate news sources. PolitiFact is a great example. PolitiFact said mostly true that that, uh, illegal immigration is down. No, we know it's absolutely true. Snopes fact-checked us. Here's a good example one time. Snope, and I'm going to get to the conclusion here. Snope one, Snopes, Snopes one time fact checked us about Cologne. We were talking about after Cologne, there were leaflets being passed out uh, teaching migrants how not to rape. Mm-hmm. We took actual pictures of the leaflets. Now, if you read the original article, we said that after Cologne, these leaflets were being passed out. They were being circulated in in, in big vol, in significant numbers, voluminous numbers. Hmm. That was the original article. Now. Some people tried to say, hey, they didn't just print, those, those pamphlets were printed long before Cologne, Germany. Yes, exactly. We never said they were printed right now. We talked about the circulation of those pamphlets. And Snopes tried to say, well, uh, if you look at this, no, this is, this is inaccurate because these pamphlets were printed a long time ago. <laughs> but if you read the original article, that's what we said. 
Just because we you're said because using... now, but now they're raping a lot, so they're ma- they're making a comeback. The don't rape pamphlets. Yeah. Just because your ra- your 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 church uh, evangelism tracks were printed up in 1979, right. so using them, right? Well, especially if, make all, it less especially if we haven't been passing them out in numbers and we pass them out tenfold starting tomorrow, yeah. that would be newsworthy. So Snopes says, well, actually, we're printed a while ago. Well, yes, but Snopes. Doesn't say, and by the way, they were being recirculated in mammoth numbers and passed out on the street after the Kelowna tax. Why? Because Snopes, I don't even think, addressed the, the Kelowna tax. Maybe they printed too many. Which we, maybe they printed too many. It's just a surplus here. Here. Snopes. On the back of it, it's telling you the wonders of Jehovah. You don't know, but the point is Snopes. Snopes sucks. PolitiFact. People can do that easily. People can take mm-hmm. anything out of context and craft an argument against an argument that you were never making. Um, and Vox does that a lot. And they're really good at it. And so I want you this week to, we've always said this, right? Set HuffPo, Salon, set all of the sites that you hate, all of the people who you don't like, watch them, listen to them, read them on a regular basis. Also, try to learn not to hate them. Don't be angry about it, but educate yourself and be in the know. Even more than that is I want you to have your antenna up whenever you read something that you think is not biased. Whenever you see something where you're going, gosh, what, are, what is a sanctuary city? You type it into YouTube, guess what's going to be the first thing that shows up? It's not going to be this podcast. No. This thing's been demonetized no. by segment one, okay? Yeah. By the time Jihadi Bond it's theme song. It's on page song, 12. It's, it's on page 12. <laughs> Vox is going to be right up there. And again, it starts with this is a sanctuary city. We can agree. Okay, that's accurate. We're not beyond agreeing on facts. And it uses that as a springboard into speculation. Now, there's also nothing wrong with that if you're straightforward that you're giving an opinion or that it's speculation. Vox doesn't do that. CNN doesn't do that. Chris Cuomo doesn't do that. A lot of people on the left don't do that. Something else that's important. I won't say that Vox is lying. I won't say that someone else is lying. Lying means that you can prove a motive. I just think they're wrong. Now, there are some people who uh, I will argue very rarely. I, it really seems like this person is proactively lying because you can go back and check an inconsistency where they knew information that they withheld. So that's something important, too. It doesn't necessarily mean that these people are lying. It means that they are wrong. And again, there's always confirmation bias. You are choosing to go along with the narrative. We do it, too. We try to be straightforward about that. But what, for every, every biased piece of reporting, every biased piece of journalism, this is a comedy show, but out there, biased pieces of germ- journalism that you see. For every one that you do see, there's 10, 15, 20 that you don't see. The New York Times, up until recently, did not think that they were biased. They genuinely didn't think that they were biased. Only 7% of reporters identify as Republican. I'm sure Walter Cronkite thought he actually was the gold standard of journalism. But he said he couldn't be a journalist and be a liberal. I'm sure Dan Rather uh, maybe didn't even know that people were forging documents to try and indict Bush. Maybe he didn't even know. I'm sure a lot of these people aren't aware that they're super biased. I know because I've, I've been in the halls at Fox News, at CNN, at all of these places. I've been on these programs. And a lot of the time, many of these people think, well, I'm doing my job as a journalist. And they either make a judgment call to omit something, which is pivotal, or they don't even know that it's relevant to be included. So don't attribute the motive, but be aware that for everyone you spot, Get the, for every bottle cap you spot, get the metal detector, be the creep with the zinc oxide on your nose and scan across that seashore because there are 20 more lurking beneath the surface. And one of the most valuable tools that you can have in your toolbox, particularly as you go into university right now, or if you're just someone who surfs the internet, is being able to decipher. The left is trying to teach classes to decipher fake news. And what do they try and teach you right now in school? They say, well, anything that's opinion is fake news. No, no, opinion can be real news tainted with opinion. Opinion can be real news and offering an opinion. Fake news can be inaccurate news. And you see that a lot and you often don't know that you're seeing it. And that's what really gets my goat. And I just bought one, a Nubian one, because they make great buttermilk. I love you guys. See you next week, Monday with Diamond and Silk. That'll be fun. 